everyone. I am Diana Kelter, a senior trends analyst based out of Mintel Chicago office. Hello, everyone. I am Carol Wong Lee. I am the associate director of lifestyles and leisure for Mintel Canada. Great. So before we jump into our discussion, you're probably noticing there are a bunch of balloons behind me. It was my birthday a few days ago and some lovely Mintel co-workers did a balloon delivery to brighten my Zooms for the day. And I thought I would keep it so I could hopefully brighten your day as you watch this video as well. Um, and it fits perfectly. What we're going to be talking about today is self-care. Um, so at the start of the year, I wrote a blog post from Mintel called The Evolution of Self-Care. Because what I was noticing in my role as a trends analyst is that I was starting to see this division between what self self-care is and what the treat yourself mentality is. So within the treat yourself mentality, which kind of refers to things like having that glass of wine at night or putting on a face mask, so things that kind of bring you that instant gratification of relaxation, which is obviously critically important, but we're noticing that's different from the idea of self-care, which is more about some of those longer term habitual routines that are so important to, to your mental health. So obviously the notion of self-care is so important right now, right. especially in the home. So can you talk to totally. us a little bit about that relationship right now? Yeah, of course. So obviously everyone is at home right now. Um, and what I think the biggest takeaway um, in the self-care discussion is I think a lot of consumers feel like Practicing self-care means adding something to your day. And what I'm noticing is it's not really about adding something, but about reframing how the, the things you already have to do around your house. So essentially the chores we all have to do. Um, and reframing that to have a more accomplished driven um, component to it. So on a personal anecdote, um, my New Year's resolution was to always keep uh, the sink clean every night, to do make sure the dishes were done. Because I read once that just doing that one simple thing having that accomplished made um, your next day feel so much better. And it kind of had this impact on your mental health um, because of the impact that it had on so many other things. So you wake up feeling a little better because your sink's not cluttered. And then when it's time for dinner, you're starting from a clean slate. So I have personally noticed that just making sure that got done has had an impact on my mental health because I do feel more accomplished. I have a clean space and it does make the aspect of cooking dinner feel a little less of a stressor because I'm starting with everything ready to go. Um, and I think that leads in perfectly to another topic we're seeing happen right now inside the home, which is everyone is cooking at home so much more baking. And I think what we're seeing in a big takeaway for brands and influencers right now is that obviously there's a role to play in being educational and helping consumers learn how to cook and embrace new recipes, but there's also a sense of joy they can bring, which fits into that self-care um, topic as well. So one influencer I love to follow is Gabby Dalkin of What's Gabby Cooking? Um, and she is really kind of has this mentality of she could be your best friend. Um, on Instagram, she often does Instagram lives, and it's very unscripted. She's in her sweats. She's in um, her home, obviously just kind of cooking um, as she would normally. And I think that brings a sense of joy to people where they feel like, I want to bring that joy into my kitchen. And it just makes that process of cooking feel that much more enjoyable and fun. And it just it makes it less of a chore in itself. So I think there are various ways you can think about reframing the idea of tasks around the house and make it feel more like a self-care mentality. So obviously we know that times are going to be changing. We're already talking yeah. about easing back um, prevention, preventative measures. So totally. how do you think this relationship is going to change as we move forward? Totally. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, society is going to gradually reopen, but I think for quite a while, we are still going to see home be that safe haven for consumers. So I think we're still going to see these, those foundational things, um, those routines that have been developed will be critical in the months to come as uh, consumers kind of do think about socialization in new ways, because if socialization is going to continue in the home, having those built in routines, whether it is having a process in place for how you and what you cook, and maybe people have expanded their comfort zones, or having that routine in place where their 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 dishes are always done i think it will just create a, another element of calm to make people feel even more comfortable if they're going to invite a, a select group of close friends over or invite the extended family over as you know those social social circles can be expanded so i think it really will be foundational even in the months to come and then I want to flip the script because I want to talk about what you wrote about it on our blog post, which is this idea um, of seniors and how they're going to have a role to play in this self-care discussion. So what, what do you think is um, being done for seniors right now or could be done? Absolutely. I think one of the things we have to be careful of is that self-care is often talked about in the light of younger generations, mm -hmm. millennials, which are obviously, totally. you know, a, a segment that's very important and has their own unique challenges. 
but it doesn't mean that this isn't a conversation that can span over many generations. Uh, one right. of the really interesting things that we had seen take place before the pandemic was the fact that consumers were really embracing this notion of uh, holistic wellness where they were focused mm -hmm. really strongly on mental wellness, even maybe more right. so on that than on physical wellness. But what's mm -hmm. important when it comes to self-care uh, and seniors is the fact that we really can't lose sight of the fact that physical wellness is something that's really important mm -hmm. and actually feeds into their mental wellness. So addressing something as simple as building up muscles so that they can be right. balanced physically can actually help contribute to things like self-confidence, which also will then help mitigate things like depression. So there's a For really sure. strong relationship. And one of the things that I think we often lose sight of is the fact that actually using, like you said, it's reframing things that we're right. already doing day to day is a great way for them to be addressing their physical wellness. According to the World Health Organization, simple leisure activities like going for a walk or gardening mm -hmm. actually works as, um, you know, as, as physical totally. activity. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that that actually opens up a lot of opportunities for companies across uh, categories that are not traditionally associated with fitness. So home-based uh, companies, for example, really have an opportunity to connect with yep. uh, seniors right now. So if you think mm -hmm. about something like a furniture store, for example, they could take inspiration from things like mall walks and create virtual movement classes where right. seniors can still see each other, but then you're just inviting them to move around in their own personal space. Mm -hmm. Or similarly, home improvement retailers could create senior-friendly home gardening kits, but then supplement right. this with a group, virtual group sessions where seniors are tending to their gardens together. So you can really see how totally. it's about building on these simple leisure activities and providing a way that they can still be active and social, but safe at the same time. And I think this really aligns with the trend that we're seeing. So much like how SARS had accelerated the adoption of online shopping for consumers mm -hmm. in China, we're seeing actually a similar trend in market right now in North America where consumers are really going to be embracing using digital platforms to address their physical wellness. Yep. So I think mm -hmm. that, again, this is really opens up opportunities for um, the extension of non-traditional uh, categories, categories that are not traditionally associated with, with physical fitness to, to be a part of the conversation. Totally. And then looking forward, um, we know that seniors are going to be that demographic that will have to isolate even longer because they're um, a generation most at risk. So how do you see self-care um, remaining such an important topic for that, uh, for that generation or that demographic? No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like you mentioned, like, because of preventative measures being lifted in gradual stages, they're going to be experiencing these for the longest. Mm -hmm. So digital platforms are going to remain important for a long time. But I think broader picture, we have to really be aware of the fact that in both Canada and the US, seniors are actually the fastest growing segment mm -hmm. of the population. And in fact, right now in both countries, one in five people are actually already of uh, 65 or over. And so this, that does actually relate back full circle to millennials and Gen Xers because what's happening is that mill, uh, millennials and Gen Xers are becoming the caregivers for their right. aging parents. And so mm -hmm. we really do need to find more tools and ways to help support seniors in this way of self-care. And one avenue I think really deserves some attention is finding ways to mobilize younger people who are interested in helping. Mm -hmm. And this is a concept that we actually do see in market today. So this is something I talked about in the blog post where there's this Neighbors Helping Neighbors program, which is a partnership between Walmart and the Nextdoor app where mm -hmm. younger people who want to help seniors get groceries can do that. So totally. this is really an avenue I, I believe that can be explored and, and should be really mutually beneficial because it will provide relief for those um, generations, the younger ones that need to take care of the seniors, but also provide a broader base in which we can uh, address self-care for seniors moving forward. Totally, totally. So this is obviously a conversation that's gonna continue to evolve. Uh, Carol and I are going to continue monitoring it um, and adding our POV to the discussion. Um, so tonight I might have that glass of wine, but not until after my sink is clean. Um, so I hope this provided some inspiration um, for you, all of you listening as well.